start recording. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to fucking 2B Release. We just recorded for 14 fucking minutes with nothing. Ribrian got a 5 out of 5. <laughs> now, let me tell you, Ribrian got a 5 out of 5 because she's beautiful, she's lovely, Dragon Ball fans suck, that's why they hate her. <laughs> then... <laughs> And then we have some uh, questions we got them from YouTube. Now we're going to have to quickly <laughs> summarize what they had. Uh, we got we got a, our boy Appa asking, what was the greatest return of all time? You you asked it in a very cute way. We ain't got time for cute right now. The answer was Abdul when he peed in a man's <laughs> mouth and Michael Jordan from Space Jam. <laughs> Your boy Chips Ahoy asked us, what is the most painfully ironic thing to ever happen? He has every Super Saiyan 3 unit, but he does not have Bardock, so he can't run the team. And then he said the great line, tap into the Grand Tour. <laughs> that and is then, a really good line. It's a fantastic line, and the most ironic thing. Second time, now that it's being recorded. Second time, tap into, tap into the Grand Tour is still good. That's actually the name of today's episode, is tap into the Grand Tour. Um... And our answers were that uh, uh, Zenrot kept farming one specific animal, monster, and monster hunter. <laughs> now I mean, it seems like you were hunting sheep. <laughs> you were hunting an animal in um, in monster hunter, and then you kept trying to get one drop. And then when it finally came time for a drop, you got two, and the extra one was useless to you. And then for me, it was the fact that I pulled Naruto last uh, in our collection, and that is. The summary up till now of what we were talking about of what of what we what you missed, yeah, what you missed, and then what the fuck were we talking before I realized that this wasn't recording? I assumed that we were going on to the next question, but I don't remember because my brain bl- <laughs> that we were not recording oh at all. God damn it, all right, next, okay, so that was questions from YouTube. Thank you for bringing in the questions by the way, that's two minutes. We summed up fourteen minutes of work in two minutes. Um. All right. So here's questions that we're going to be needing answered for to be released. You guys send them in. Thank you very much. Let's get into them. If you want to ask us a question, wait till Tuesday, and I'll I'll put it up, and then y'all you'll be solid. First question comes from Baron of Red Soul Rock, and he asked, "How many whoopers do you think it'd take to tackle Godzilla?" And it kind of depends. Do you mean what? It, 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 what's the new thing called? Like a mega mode or <laughs> a gigantic mode? Oh, uh, oh god, G- Gigamax or some shit. Yeah, uh, Gigagantes. If you were to get a giant ass whooper that way and then make them fight Godzilla, Gigantamax. That's what it's called. Gigantamax. There you go. I guess it kind of depends. Is uh, Godzilla? Can we confirm his typing? Is he a dragon slash fire type? Uh, well, the fire is like blue. Well, that is <laughs> new active energy than fire. I don't know if it's mm. and he's very good at swimming. Charizard, actually. yeah, he's he, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Mm. We can at least confirm he's dragon. He might be a Lugia situation where he just able is able to know like different elements of every single thing. Yeah, uh, so that's I, fine. <laughs> so I don't know. I think it would take. Let's assume we have an army of gigantic ass whoopers. I think you would be able to get him down when if there were at least 10 whoopers all attacking him at the same time. And they all had to be extremely huge, like I said, with the, the, the Gigamax. And then I think they could tackle Godzilla. Then and only then, though. And this is also very clearly an unfair fight. A little bit. I'll, I'll defer to your expertise on, on whoopers. Okay. And Godzilla. I'm pretty knowledgeable on Godzilla as well. In the, uh, the, the Godzilla's power set. Uh, next question comes in from Ethan Pace. He says, would you and Zen want a Dr. Stone mobile game? Uh, yeah, it's called Or Collection, and if only he had lived long enough, we would have been able to get, uh, Dr. Stone inside of it. I don't know. I don't know, would you want a solo... So here's the thing that uh, we both really like Dr. Stone, I don't know if you could make a like typical action fighting Doctor Stone mobile game. <laughs> like, you cannot. You cannot. So it'd literally be like, um, you have to farm up materials to get stuff to make like to make a gun to make a gun. <laughs> so I don't know. I would play that. Would you make? It, would you? Would you play a game where you, all you were doing was crafting materials to create a gun? Yes, I would absolutely just play a game where all you just fucking do is craft. (laughs) 
if they could figure out a way to make that fun, that'd be pretty all right. Especially since I think it'd be a pretty laid back thing, all things considered. Uh, oh, maybe, you know, I was going to say maybe it'd be a card game, but then it'd be even sillier. <laughs> I don't know. They could figure out something. I would be willing to try a Dr. Stone mobile game. I just don't know what it would look like. Besides Aura Collection, like I said, because then you could always say like, oh man, it now you're just using um, all these guys to... It doesn't, it doesn't matter what they did. Like uh, they, they could science and then they damage the enemy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's perfect. <clears throat> Thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Nighthawk. And this is going to be fun because he says, what do you guys think about the whole Sony pulling Spider-Man out of the MCU? This was asked 21 hours ago, by the way. What are your expect expectations for the future of Spider-Man franchise? And here's a Chojo pick, by the way. And it says, your ass is mine, Dio. And it's Jotaro. <laughs> um, I think that this whole thing really shows how much people are willing to bend over backwards for marvel to have everything yeah there's a lot remember when lion king came out and everyone was like man disney is such a soulless corporate hellhole because the lion king uh yeah and then sony was like no disney you can't have this one thing and there's been raging internet campaigns ever since they kind of said that and it's not even really what that happened it's crazy because especially yeah, with good. with the Lion King thing, this is a very good reason why I'm I don't say anything when I know for a fact that I'm about to go. Like I knew for a fact that no matter what, I was gonna see that Lion King movie because I get my movie passes for free for I get three a week, so it has to be something. So it was gonna be that regardless of anything because I was also curious and I also really like uh, animation in general and the three D animation, though soulless, is actually extremely good. <laughs> Because yeah, it, it looks pretty impressive. Yeah, in terms of a technical th feat, it is amazing to watch. And actually being, like, uh, understanding how that stuff works and trying to figure out, like, okay, wow, I can't believe that they... It was so good. My boss thought that it was stock footage that they used of Africa. When it was actuality, it was like, no, that was... <laughs> we just actually made that. And that's impressive as hell. That doesn't make it a good movie. <laughs> that just makes it very pretty. It could be technically impressive. And, and also, I, I still... A good movie. It annoys it annoys me when people are like, "That movie sucks," but also Lion King is my favorite movie ever, and it sucks because this one was just an exact copy of the last one. And I was like, "Okay, well, yeah. shut up, idiot." So it me... can't suck if it's an exact copy of your favorite movie ever. Fuck you. Okay, so let me tell you. It has to at least be good. Now that we're here together, I can tell you now exactly what they mean because people are bad at telling you their opinions. Apparently, it's not an exact copy. Do you know? Do you remember that Mario Party mini game where you had to go with a jackhammer and go over a traced thing? Oh. And uh, no, you don't remember that one. No. no. Okay, I so, didn't play a lot of Mario Party. Oh, uh, damn. Well, there was a Mario Party minigame where they said you're on a jackhammer and you have to trace out a boo, but you had to actually trace it with a shitty Nintendo 64 controller. So it, a lot of the times when they were like, oh, just draw a boo, what would happen is that you would go for the arm and then you would go wildly off, <laughs> off mark. And then at the end of the minigame, they would give you a percentage rating, and whoever had the highest percentage won. And usually the person with the highest percentage was around 75%. Or it was around 90% 90 if they were good. If you got 100%, actually, you got a zero, because that's how good the N64 was at calculating how you did stuff. So if you did it too good, <laughs> it would be a zero. Um, this Lion King movie is like if someone did it at 75%, <laughs> if that's how they won that minigame. So... <laughs> It's That's not... okay to me, though. Seventy-five percent of the Lion King is a lot better than a lot of other shit out there that people are looking at. Yeah, and I will say it's for depending on how much you love. Because there's, let me tell you, there's uh, my boss, for example, loves Lion King with such a passion. He says it's the number one. It's the it's. He says in his eyes that is a perfect movie. There is no uh, anything out about it. And when he was criticizing the movie, he was literally going down to, like, saying the sound design. He was, like, going into such minute detail that was, like, okay. So, you, I, I felt the same way. Because I felt the same way when that's when the first song started in Asawenya. It doesn't hit you the same way. And he says it specifically does with the mixing. They fucked it up because in the original, it hits you, like, big and hard. And this one, it's a very, like, mellow for some reason. And it's those tiny things where you kind of go, like, okay... 
this is this is Lion King. This just isn't as good as I hoped it would be, I guess, in the idea. It's like the idea of just maybe I should just actually watch Lion King. It's kind of like um, the old JoJo Part 3 anime or the Hunter x Hunter anime that was old where people say that's better than the current one. Where they kind of go like, well, they're kind of in essence the same thing. The only difference is that this one has more detail or is more bloody. So that's where they're coming from. I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's we- it's weird. I think once you see it, I think you'll understand. I also don't think you'll ever see it. So it's fine. I mean, I mean I'm not saying that it's as good as the original one. No. I-, I just don't agree that you can logically call it back. criticisms that it is an ex- exact copy of the old one and it's a god awful one of the worst movies ever made like it cannot be both of those things mm. it, it should not exist i'll totally sign off on that there's no reason for it to exist yeah. be so objectively terrible that you'd rather watch tommy wiseau than watch this hey first of all there's and also a... it's an exact replica of your favorite movie of all time there are countless classic movies that i would not watch over a tommy wiseau movie i would rather watch the room than a lot of other good movies out there <laughs> Uh, but we're digressing from the main point here, which is that uh, either way, I think a lot of this is on Disney's fault. And it's crazy that people think it's not. And also this is Almost coming... all of it is Disney's fault, like yeah. like a good 99 percent of it. Yeah. And this is coming from someone who is an unequivalent Disney fan. There's no going back how much I love Disney, how much it has inspired me and how much it's like literally built into my DNA. You cannot look at this and go. How were they not at fault? It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't. Oh, yeah, Disney is absolute magic, but like the corporate side of it fault. is horrible. It's all their fault, one hundred percent. And I feel exact like exact figures on this. Um, so yeah, you know, bear with me here. Fair enough. I'm told that merchandising for Far From Home equaled about like dollars. Mm-hmm. Um. Disney got all of that, and they got five percent of the gross, which was obviously not even close to two billion dollars. Yeah, more money than Sony did off of Far From Home, and then they were still like, "No, fuck you." Also, yeah, it's crazy because the first thing I can't believe how greedy Sony is, and it's only because they don't know that they have like I didn't know that uh, Disney had 100% of the merchandising. Like once you factor in that then like it's like yeah, no shit they get 5% cuz they don't get they're not making the fucking thing. All they're doing is telling them, "Hey, uh in this scene, how about you make like a a joke instead of having any serious consequences? How about that?" Does that feel good? It's okay. annoying too because like people will will look at that. You know, Sony financed all the the solo movies. Yeah. Also, fun fact Sony got zero dollars in any way from Civil War game. Hmm. Even though Spider-Man was in those movies, they got nothing. And they were fine with that. They get the 95-5 split off of Homecoming and Far From Home. That's it. People were saying, like, oh, well, Disney offered to split the financing, so then Sony doesn't have to finance them anymore. But the budget from Far From Home was $160 million, so $80 million, and they won a $470 million increase in box office profit for that. Yeah, no. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, it's literally, it's the same thing that Disney did when they started fucking over small movie theaters for more money. It's just Disney, it's, it's the same thing people, when people say Disney has a monopoly, that dude, nobody gives a shit. I want my good Spooderman. Problem. Because Disney can do shit. Like, go to movie theaters and say, okay, game, you have to put it in your biggest theater for way long- longer than the average lifespan of a film, and we want more of the ticket money that you get. Yeah. And, and the- what are you going to do? You fucking say no? Yeah. We don't want Disney movies in our theater anymore, even though it's 95% of fucking movies nowadays? Yeah, it's way too much. Do it. You have to fucking do it. Yeah, it's, it's what it's... people mean when they say Disney has a monopoly and it's bad. So many people today have been like, either one, I don't care if Disney has a monopoly, or two, what's the problem with it? It's all just movies anyway, bro. And it's not all just movies. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's insane. And it's also been the, uh, the only thing I've seen more insane is people going, which is I knew what would happen after fucking they bought Fox, which is like, oh, well, watch out. Disney's about to buy Sony. And I was about to go, motherfuckers, Sony is owned by a Japanese company. Good fucking luck trying to get something from a Japanese company. Yeah, Japanese companies fucking hate everyone. Japanese companies operate off like pure mouse. Yeah, Japanese companies uh, back in the NES days used to hide their employees' names, which is why you saw people named like Yuki-chan's papa, because they were specifically didn't want their names out there so that the competition could not take their employees. So what makes you think that in any way that like they could buy them? Because they can't. I, it's not going to work that way. Plus, like... So, uh, Japanese companies are so like vindictive that they have all these rules in place not to credit their actors and shit like it's bad yeah i mean um... what? so do you know why cloud does not have an english voice in smash brothers do you know that story no why cloud's english voice actor at the time he has since been replaced he's not in the final fantasy remake anymore uh-huh. um it's actor union oh. and um Nintendo refuses to credit actors who are in unions. Union, they won't put your name in the game. But Square Enix requires their actors to be credited. Nintendo said, we're not crediting him. And Square said, well, you ha- have to. So Nintendo said, then he's not in the fucking game. That would explain why. There's a lot of weird things about specifically Cloud. So that's probably why there's such a weird, like... <laughs> So that that's why Cloud is only Japanese, even though he's had an English voice actor for like twenty years. That's crazy. I mean, you've also heard. Uh, I think this is, was the best part, and I think a lot of people. And I think this is another culture clash thing where it's like people don't um, people don't understand this mindset. So the idea of like when a company in America is dying, uh, what they do is they'll sell off their stuff. So in essence, basically, people get to continue that business, right? Uh, when Japan, when Nintendo was doing bad and they asked them um, specifically, so what happens if Nintendo goes down? Because you guys have a lot of like, you guys have Mario, you have this. Would you even consider selling it to someone? Who would you even consider selling it to? And Nintendo's response is, if we can't make consoles anymore, Nintendo games die with us. <laughs> oh, I remember that. They were like, yeah, we wouldn't give Mario Zelda to anybody no if, if we fail it's just over no it, more mario no more zelda yeah that that's it and to be fair i think they might that's have fine they might have softened that a bit because now you know after i want to say when that previous company was not when a, a wada was in but once he started doing the whole like we can put mario on a phone and it's fine <laughs> like we could do fire yeah, on a phone. yeah they they really i remember weren't nintendo the ones who like put out some passive aggressive shit about phone games yes. and like how they wouldn't do them Yes, the, they put out... They, like, weren't real games. They put... They now put, they have, like, four gotchas. I want to say that at one point, uh, Reggie was forced, either because the company told him to say this, but saying that online multiplayer was not a big deal. <laughs> so, <laughs> they battled... Yeah, to... Nintendo's the... God, they're consistently, like, 15 years behind the time. No, they are. They make fantastic games, but they're also constantly behind. They're both behind and ahead in a lot of dumb ways, because sometimes they'll do something where it's like, that's great. People, other people will take it. Like, that's how eventually how the Wiimote eventually got to the point where, like, now, like, actual, uh, those kind of controllers are used for VR. It turned out that those kind of controls weren't good for just actual playing video games, but for VR games where you have to simulate, like, something in your hand, it's perfect. And then that's how we got um, the move. And then because of that, we were able to figure out, like, some stuff in the VR but then they do stuff like their internet thing just doesn't make any sense. So everything is just like, I don't understand. So you have like to... Miyamoto makes a game and he's like, yeah, this in 1989. This is good. Yeah. And here's the crazy thing. Else. Here's the crazy thing, which is also hilarious to me and also just crazy because this is something that would never happen in America. Miyamoto gets the same salary as everyone else. <laughs> he does not have an increased uh, money mate at all. Also, it's funny. To, this is completely unrelated. It is. But it's funny to how many people that I talk to about like Nintendo stuff who do not realize that the owner and president of everything. 
Uh, well, like he is like Miyamoto is not the owner of Nintendo. Yeah, like when I I said something to about uh, the anniversary of Iwata's passing this year. Yeah. Like, thank God that Miyamoto is is there to keep everything together as the president. <laughs> it's like he's not the fucking president. No, he's not. He's not he's... even close to the president of the company. He does help out with a lot of games, but uh, in his eyes, he is just a regular employee. He's never desired to be anything more. He just made Mario. Like Nintendo's been around since like the 1800s. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, yeah. He's uh, back when they started as I believe they used to have make love hotels and Hanafudo cards. Is that I believe that is the lore. Of yeah, I know they made Hanafudo cards. I don't know if they were, did love hotels or not. Uh, they, I, I know for a fact that they um, used to own love hotels. I don't think they have them anymore. Uh, they they didn't have like successful games until Game and Watch in the 1970s. So it's not like they Miyamoto made Mario and they were like, "How about Nintendo exists now?" Well, he he uh, he did make Donkey Kong, which is a super um, uh, that was super big in the arcades for that. That was around the time. I but mean, that it, didn't create the company. Nintendo. No, no, there, it, it already existed. Yeah, it already existed as like a child's uh, toy thing, which is why they. St- continue to be exactly that and they were they're great at that but also, and never anything more than that no you don't need it to be anything more man sometimes a cigar is just a cigar and that's perfectly fine <laughs> so in summary let's just say uh this whole uh disney shit sucks and everyone that's going on pro disney sucks as well mm-hmm. i think disney that's for us. fuck you disney if you want to fight us in the comments, I will gladly not read any of them. But if you want to just talk to us in general very calmly, I'm willing to listen to what you got to say. Yep. Uh, next question we come in comes in from Air Fighter. Good thing we made up all that talk with just nothing but Disney things. That's how we. <laughs> that's how it does. Uh, Air, next question comes from Air Fighter who says, What is the best way to digest Dr. Stone? And then Crimson asks, says, It's the manga IMO. The anime is great, but nothing trumps the manga art. And I'm going to have to agree with Crimson on this one. I, I also think... agree. The anime is good. Yes. Um, the anime is good. The animation is, like, not ideal. I'll be the first one to tell you that. It has a lot of moments where you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what, what was that? Hmm. I think it's good. I think the... Spoiler alert. Spoiled from the fucking thumbnail. I'm doing uh, my top three manga, or anime of the year. And Dr. Stone's literally on the thumbnail. It is one of my top three. Um, it's really... The voice acting is really good. Yeah, they got a good, really sen- good Senku job. on that one. I, that, it makes sense in my mind when I hear it. Yeah, his, his uh, the Senku voice actor is really good. The voice actor for uh, Bruno Butrati from JoJo is Sukasa, which is awesome. That is good. Cast all around. Um, the performances are good. Eh, so-so. My only problem with the anime is the pacing is a little bit weird. Just from, like, not... As a standalone product, the pacing is fine, but coming from the manga, it's a little weird. Yeah, well, you the miss ma- some things, or some stuff gets a little bit too fast. Like the manga, you had a few chapters of like one of the boys, you know. Yeah. He was never like one of the boys, but he was not like. Here's a montage. Okay, now I'm evil. <laughs> like it, it was too quick. Yeah. In the in the anime, and that's a worry that I'm gonna have because it's a hard cap, twenty four episodes. That's all it's getting. So, um, happen a lot where they're going to be like, hey, here's a character, yada, yada, yada. Okay, <laughs> now here's their plot stuff. And so, you miss out on a lot of stuff that way. So, let me ask you this Do you think they're ending? We won't say, I won't say what it is, but there's this very specific ending of what feels like the first arc of, uh, of the manga where something happens. Um, it's very big. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You're referring to the end of Stone Wars. Yes. Do you think it ends there? I don't know because 24 episodes does not seem like a lot to get all the way there. Hmm. But it is the most logical endpoint committed to a season two, basically. Yeah. We'll uh, see. Because the Stone Wars is technically the second arc of the manga. Yeah, that is correct. It is because there's an entire other arc before that one. So that's what makes right. me think like I'm not sure if they'll like I'm not sure how they'll uh, handle it specifically. But it does feel like it's going at a way faster pace than the manga to me, at least. Because again, yeah, it's like, definitely faster. 
when you read the manga, there's a lot of things of like, and this is also a bummer because they cut it from the anime, which I thought it was really funny in the manga, is when he says, we will be the Adam and Eve of this new world. Uh, the next page yeah, and specific- he's like, how can you do that with two dudes? And he goes like, it's a metaphor. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> yeah, shut up, idiot. It's a metaphor. <laughs> So uh, and see, there's a lot of moments like that that you miss. Like, you miss the silly Tsukasa stuff. Because, like, when he first joins, serious, like, mystery, edgy boy that he is. Mm-hmm. But, like, he has his silly moments with the group where he has, like, the funny reaction faces and stuff. And you miss out on all of that just to so the, man, the anime can hurry through it. Phantom Bloods anime, too. Where you end up missing a lot of, like, the individual character scenes of, of like, a younger Jonathan and Dio before the time skip that shit and they want to get to the sunlight fighting yeah and so like that's fine because that's the actual content but at the same time it just kind of sucks it's because like you character as you could be mm-hmm. yeah no definitely so yeah if you if you're someone who prefers anime check out the anime but then if you like the anime check out the manga because the manga has a lot of more just like i i don't know if you're if you're someone like penta who penta says this that he needs music to go along with scenes i don't know put a fucking backing track or something as you're reading Uh, the manga um the dr stone soundtrack is fucking godlike Hmm. the ost is so good so So literally get that and listen to it while you read it there you go. Do you want to? I was. Gonna, we should not say this on here. But if you want to record, um, uh, you as uh the main character from Doctor Stone, and then me as his friend, and then I'll put the backing tracks of the anime behind it, so people <laughs> can experience the manga the way like the episode was. <laughs> Tell me, and I'll gladly edit that up for you, and then we'll. It'll be a straight up. Make that happen. We can make that happen. All right, and then I'll edit up. We'll deal with that later. Right now we have to finish this and deal with some other Teppin stuff. <laughs> but there you go. Look forward to a, a very specific reading of the, the uh, Dr. Stone. Uh, next question comes in from uh, uh, Nighthawk again, who actually, I remember this. He says, also, can you ask uh, DB, uh, is DB, uh, is, uh, D-Free, I was about to say his fucking full name, which is DBZHD, which I don't understand why it's the end of it is HD. Actually, I do know why it's like Def, I guess. Yeah, it is. Uh, a lot of YouTubers did that, so I assume that's why d does it. We'll ask him next yeah, time. There's a lot of them. It was like a trend for a while. Yeah, like uh, uh, PS, the PS3 360, what is, uh, what is his full name? I think that, I think it's fuck what is it i don't know i don't care fuck it yeah it's something. it has hd at the end yeah it does uh he says how does um with launch being a summonable unit uh before our boy krillin is he on suicide watch and i actually asked d free uh for a statement on this and here is his statement um i asked someone asked for to be released how would you feel about launch being a summonable unit before krillin can i get your statement for the record please and he says, I don't mind. Krillin is getting a new card. <laughs> and I said, thank you for your statement. <laughs> so there you How go. How nice. It is. You know, even even when being questioned, because uh, Nighthawk added d when he made that question. <laughs> <laughs> so he's taking it in stride. Let me tell you, as someone who also is constantly waiting for his unit to get a new unit, it's a hard luck life for everyone. The unit's not even a drag. Dragon Ball character. I will fight you on this, Zen. <laughs> Aurelia is totally a Dragon Ball character. She is in an official arc. She and she is not a. All right, whatever. We. She is one hundred percent a Dragon Ball character. She is more of a Dragon Ball character than half of the Dragon Ball characters out there. <laughs> I, I guess so. Yeah, I'll fight you on this. She's the reason why there's dinosaurs in that world. So <laughs> better respect. Why it's like that. Uh, and the final question comes from Team Yell Essen, who says, "What was the first unit that you were disappointed to have pulled that was featured on a Dokkan Fest banner?" Um, he wasn't featured, but when I pulled, um, I'm not going to be able to say his name because every time I say his name, uh, I get a bunch of creepy videos on my like, "Hey, check this out too." Oh yeah, it's the it's an LR Vegeta. B Vegeta. <laughs> yeah, LR B Vegeta. Uh, I was extremely disappointed because when I pulled him, I was going for someone else. I was going for LR Kale and Khalifa, and then he showed up, and I was extremely pissed off. And I want to say uh, someone left a dislike because they did not understand my logic. 
<laughs> because literally the last summon video, I was like, I was all for him. And then I officially just like, after Kid got Goku him got, got really, pissed. Yeah, I got pissed. But that was because Kid Goku got out and I only wanted him for a lead for a rally. And now that he's no longer necessary and he's still a good unit. I was just angry that it wasn't the right unit. Yeah, uh, yeah. People get weird with that. Like, you better be grateful that you got anything. It's it's weird. P- Someone was getting angry at me for pulling LR Beerus when I said, well, for getting angry that I pulled LR Beerus when I wanted launch. He's like, is this really what people have come to in Dokkan, complaining about pulling an LR instead of an SSR? And then I didn't respond to him because, first of all, fuck off. <laughs> I don't want to give you the <laughs> attention. <laughs> but the idea is like, listen, man, I, I only care about new things if it's not new it's old so that's bad At one time i don't do some of the videos very often and the one time i did one so many str gogetas that i did not need and i was like god damn it and one guy responded and was like so many people would have been thrilled to get that shit man what the fuck and i was like why would i be happy about shit i don't need yeah it's like Come on, am I supposed to be, is this supposed to be like a pulling experience just because you're trying to live vicariously through me because I'm doing summon videos because that's what I do when I watch D-Free Summon is I pretend to be Yeah, that's what summon videos are for is I don't want to summon, but I want the thrill of summoning. So let me watch other people use their money to do it. Exactly. Like I would love to pull a bunch of um, old um, Pokemon cards, but I ain't got that money. I can barely afford a house, let alone a, a PSA 10 Charizard. But let me watch Rhyme do it real quick because he usually is pretty good for that so there you go that's the last question what what, what was uh what were you just dis- i guess str gogeta is that the one for you um no i think the one that pissed me off the most was um was it, there was one that, that i got really mad about and it was really recently hmm. was it on dokkan yeah. Uh, Somebody specific didn't have that was like objectively good. Horseshit. What do I need this for? That's a good question because there's a ton of units I like think that. It was... Well, actually, it happened to me the other day while I was trying to get my girl team together. Uh huh. Bra. Yeah, that's hell? right. I remember that. Yeah, and I got LR Trunks doing that. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't give a <laughs> shit. It made me angrier because I was like, that should be a harder to pull card than she is. So literally, I just defied the odds and I got this horse shit that I don't want. Yeah, yeah I think you said you were getting four units per summon and none of them were featured. I did one multi where uh, it was six SSRs, four non-SSRs, and none of them were featured. They were all bad. Perfect. It was Perfect. like Tech, Super Saiyan Blue, Goku, AGL, Kid Buu, and like, like all this nightmare shit. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds like summoning on Dokkan. Mm-hmm. So there you go. And with that, that's another episode of To Be Released. Uh, this one was weird, but I hope you liked it. <laughs> because, goddamn, well, I can't believe we lost 14 minutes. I'm still like sh- surprised if this if we didn't lose 30 minutes here. If we lose 30 minutes here, I'll just consider to be released cursed and this episode yeah, can never series end. is over <laughs> if this didn't record the whole series is done yeah fuck it packing up my bag and making a brand new show called tepid to the grand tour <laughs> <laughs> Damn. All, right. all right everyone let's end this the the way we always do all right remember all right remember kids don't play dokkan because if you do play token you go to hell before you die that's no good see you later everybody